What is up guys and welcome back to another raid Jay Legends video with me the real deal so there is a fire night tournament going on at the moment we can only use epic champions um and we know we're going to be kicking it old school we're going to be doing stage 20 i'm going to be showing you a really fast team comp with a hundred percent win rate uh, but just before we do that let's look at why we should be doing fire night so first off there's some tasty rewards up for grab there's soul stones soul coins and a five star chicken um but also because there's quite a lot going on at the moment i definitely feel that people can sort of sneak in quite easily get yourself an ancient shard some charms and maybe even some relentless gear relentless gear is really good you know you can use it in unkillable um team comps for clan boss you can use it in hydra on specific champions like a husk or royal guard so you can cycle through their abilities quicker um, but then you can also use it in arena as well, like on champions like Roto. So it is a really good uh, gear set. And I'm going to be going hard. I'm going to be using loads of resources and going for that first place to get that six star uh, relentless gear. Um, but also we've got CVC going on at the moment as well. And um, if you go down to objectives, scroll down here, and look at finite. There was 40k bonus that we can get. So basically, if you get that five star chicken, you should um have used have hit that limit of 40k and if you times you know that's basically 80k points if you do all of that for your clan so that's going to help you with personal rewards help you get whatever you need to get that last milestone and then also help your clan push for all that you know that last milestone for them as well and definitely should help you get that w over the other clan um just while we're here as well let's just have a quick look definitely feel like it's worth doing some minotaur as well um, for me, I don't need to do any potion keeps. Um, I am maxed when it comes to uh, pots. But yeah, Minotaur definitely invert worth investing in as well. So let's have a look at the team that we're running today. So Finite, Stage 20. So we've got Deacon, Husk, Seer, Allure, and Dur. Um, so let's look at the team setup. So you, you can just run this full O and it should be fine um but so it's only on round three that we're doing stuff so i just want to prioritize filling our turn meter and pushing back the enemy's turn meter and then we want that drop defense to come down as soon as possible and um, then on seer just let her do her thing round three really important for husk we want him to do his a1 first we want him to open with that because it's a double hitter um, and we don't want him to waste his um enemy max hp ability and we're not gonna oh actually i've left on his a3 um, but you can turn that off if you want the really important um um allure we're gonna turn everything off we just wanted to use her a1 so she keeps the boss's turn meter down and then duh, we just want um her no him sorry we want him to open with his a1 um just so it speeds up the run a little bit for us so let's uh let's just get straight in there so you can sub a lot of these champions out. Um, Deacon is one of the best though. He's so good. You could swap him out for someone like Stag Knight. Um, but there's not, not many champions that um, sort of do turn meter boosts that are epics. So he's probably the best in his class for that. Allure cannot be subbed. So you do need her for this. I mean, you could run like a double Allure comp if you can't reach the speeds that my Allure's got. She's like 301 or something. So very, very fast. Um, Seer as well, you can sub her out for like maybe another husk or someone like that, but she just hits so hard, so that's why she's so good for this. And then uh, we've got Dur in there just because it's always good to have a reviver. Um, and because of affinity matchup as well, he's not going to die, so he will be able to keep reviving and he revives two champions. So, yeah, really good champion to use. But there's other champions as well that you could use, you could use any sort of reviver. Um, and then we've got Husk as well, who does a bit of CC, but also does that enemy max HP damage on his A2, which just hits really hard and helps speed up the run. So we're up to the boss in one minute. So we can do it in about 40 seconds to one minute to get to the boss. And the run can vary sort of between two minutes to two minutes 20. Um, so it's still really, really fast. And yeah, now we're at the boss. It's just a case of allure 
keeping that Termita down for the whole fight where everyone else just sort of chips in. Um, Deacon's really good because of that drop defense, can help increase our damage. Seer, and there's not a lot of boss for her to eat here. There's still quite a few. And yeah, she'll just drop the boss with her A2. And then, um, sorry, A3 even. And then we've still got Husk doing that work with his A2. And he'll just do like a huge chunk of damage to the boss as well. Um, but yeah, there's definitely some different ways you could run this. But I think this is how most people are going to be doing it. Um, the other thing, other option you could do is you could bring in someone like the Fat Man, Fat, uh, Fakaran or something his name is. Um, you know, he has like a, all allies join in and that will just help knock down the shield. Um, but you do want someone that's going to manipulate that term eater and keep pushing it down. And unfortunately, there's not really that many options beside Allure. So you are going to want to bring her in. So we've almost got the boss down and we can start checking out um, the gear and masteries. So yeah, Seer and Husk, both on 1.2 mil. They are doing pretty much all the damage. Um, Allure, yeah, she doesn't hit hard. There's no point of her doing her A2 or A3 on the boss. You might as well just keep that Termeter down with her A1. And she can get weak hits because of that affinity matchup. Uh, but yeah, and then Deacon just doing loads of stuff for us. Great, great champion. So see if we'll go, well, let's scroll down and see who comes up first. So we got Seer first. So my Seer is built really strong. Um, she, I do use her in Doom Tower and that is why she has sort of ridiculous stats. Also, let's check out the gloves and stuff first. Gloves, crit damage, accuracy on the chest, speed on the boots, uh, attack of the ring, crit damage on the amulet, and then accuracy on the banner. The stats that are really important are HP, um, speed, crit rate, and crit damage, and accuracy. Bit of overkill on the crit damage, and uh, accuracy, she only needs about 200 for this. But I'd say if you're going to use her in Doom Tower, you want at least 300, 350. Uh, masteries, Seer does have very specific masteries. Um, so you basically want accuracy through support. And then offense tree, um, basically you're taking crit rate, you're taking crit damage, and all of her damage for the enemy max HP comes from crit damage. So that is why we're going all the way down into flawless execution. Um, and to help speed up the run, you take ruthless ambush, so we inflict more damage for the first hit. Um, and then cycle violence basically to help reduce the cooldown of our A3 so we can do that karma burn and just keep cycling through and doing that as fast as possible. Um, yeah, and then basically blood shield, we're only taking that so we can go into flawless execution. But yeah, very, very standard build for Seer. Next up, we've got Husk and we were using this one. So in an ideal world, he'd be in Reflex or Relentless. Unfortunately, I don't have enough gear, so we've gone for stats that we need instead. So we've got Crit Damage, Immortal, and Crit Rate gear on him. We've got Crit Damage on the gloves, HP on the chest, Speed on the boots, HP on the ring, Crit Damage on his amulet, and then Accuracy on the banner. Um, you don't have to have Accuracy on his banner. You could go HP. The reason I've done that though is because um, I use him in Hydra and it's so good for provoking the head. Um, is it the head of mischief or head of decay? I, I can't remember. The one that basically uh, cleanses the head of cleansing, you can sort of provoke him with his A1, so it's really useful, comes really in clutch. The stats that are important on him are his HP, speed, crit rate, crit damage, and accuracy. So if you were. Um, building him slightly differently, you could definitely bump up his crit damage so he does even more damage. Uh, masteries, um, we've gone very standard build, and I'm not going to talk through everyone's masteries if I don't feel it's necessary because basically this is really, really standard build for Husk, and you know it's just basically hugging in the left side, getting damage, and just a bit of healing from Heart of Glory. Sorry, not Heart of Glory, um, from Life Drinker. But yeah, the rest of it's all about damage. And then defense, just very sort of survivability, then coming down to retribution so we get counterattacks. Oh, do you know, while we're here, let's take Terence as well. Um, yeah, so very, very standard stuff. So let's see, Durs up next. No masteries. 
Sure, the hunger out does not need masteries at all. Um, but if you were going to go masteries, I would go um, defense and offense, uh, defense and offense tree. Um, so we've got HP on the gloves, defense on the chest, speed on the boots, defense on the ring, HP on the amulet, and then resistance on the banner. Stats that are important are HP. Defense, speed, um, and then resistance. And that's pretty much the. Um, and let's see, where is Deacon? Okay, he's further down, but let's check out my lure. So she's built really fast, and if you do have a lure, it's really worth building her as fast as possible, because then you can use her in Finite Stage 25. So we've got crit rate on the gloves because she does need 100% crit rate. So her A1 does prop that turn meter pushback. Uh, then we've got uh, resistance on the um, chest. Doesn't need to be resistance. It probably would be better if it was an accuracy chest piece. Uh, the only reason that she's got this is because of that speed substat. Um, and then we've got speed on the boots. Uh, attack on the ring. Crit damage on the amulet and accuracy on the banner so to be fair she probably should just have hp on the ring and amulet the reason i've got attack and crit damage is i thought it'd help with damage but it really doesn't she is such a weak hitting champion it's probably just better to go for defensive um accessories so stats that are important to her are hp um speed so 301 speed wanted to be as fast as possible Crit rate should be 100, but with 98, it's fine, it's fine. Um, and then um, accuracy, you want to be sort of around 300, 250 to 300. So you can do stage 25 of finite. Then very specific masteries. So again, just all about offense and going down into War Master, so we do more damage to the boss. Um, support, none of these masteries really help her, so that's why I've sort of stopped there to save gems. So we don't have to find Minotaur as much. Um, but yeah, all about accuracy. Um, Lure Steel just to help with stats. And then Evil Eye just to help with her A1 to push back Termia even more. Then last but not least, we're on Deacon. So um, he's in a broken set. Um, would love him to be in triple perception, but sometimes that's the way, just the way it is. So he's got um, crit rate on the gloves. He does need crit rate. Um, to help with one of his abilities, I believe. Okay, no, he doesn't. He doesn't, sorry. Um, the reason he's in crit rate is that I use him for Dark Fae. And um, he was too tanky, so he wasn't dying. So I put him in crit rate gloves so that he would die easily, but also do more damage to the boss. But I should probably, you know, while we're here, let's just, uh, let's just fully roll that out. But yeah, so crit rate gloves with uh, speed and accuracy, really important because we do want to be fast and we do want to land out, well, land our debuffs, but also push back that time meter. And um, we've got accuracy on the chest, speed on the boots, then defense on the ring, defense on the amulet, and then accuracy on the banner. Um, so HP, defense, speed, and um, accuracy are the stats that are really important in him. Uh, a bit of overkill on the accuracy, but that is because I use him for the hardest floor in Doom Tower for Dark Fae. Um, but yeah, and yeah, he's a great champion to be honest. Dark um, Deacon can be used everywhere, um, especially in Fire Knight and Doom Tower. So great, great champion can be used in end game content. Um, Masteries, just very, very standard stuff. Uh, lots of stuff in the support tree and things to help him go through his turn meter faster. And then just all about hugging the left hand side. Um, life drinker just to keep his HP uh, up. And then War Master so he does more damage. But yeah, so that is the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. Please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe. And I'll see you in my next video. Peace.